So if we jump straight into it, <clears throat> I'm gonna open up a part and very quickly go through what Unipod is all about. If we should look at uh, the corner of this part, traditionally we had our Mastcam classic tool pass that we could use. For example, parallel flow, morph, curve, etc. In this example, we have a parallel. <clears throat> and in order to get the constant step over, you'll see that you end up encountering some unwanted retracts in this scenario. So in order to rectify that, you will see that we were locked into parallel. So we would have to close this and completely start a new tool path from scratch. Bit frustrated, uh, bit, bit frustrating in the beginning, but the more you use it, the more you become familiar with the tool paths. And <clears throat> to resolve this, we end up using a morph strategy, we like the results, and we're happy. Now it's often said, wouldn't it be nice for us to just jump to the next strategy to see what type of results we'd get. Um, today, this is possible with our unified toolpath and we're going to show you in a example right here we'll just stay on the same part uh, flip this round and turn off this level <coughs> so we're going to focus on the inside of this part and if we have a look you will notice that unified's been given its uh, prime location inside the ribbon along with the classics so let's just jump into it and you'll notice straight away um, it's very similar workflow nothing looks too too different from previous until we jump into the cut pattern now you'll see there's a complete new look to the cut pattern with regards to a automatic mode a curve mode surface selection and plane related <clears throat> so Let's go into a little introduction, a little workflow on this. Let's uh, hit the automatic and focus on a machining region. Uh, for this example, I'll just select inside the, the, those surfaces there <coughs> and selection my result. And because it's automatic, uh, we could just say OK and very quickly we get results. Now, Yes, it needs a bit of tidying up from a parameter settings point of view. And we can definitely go and clean that up and get a strategy that suits us based on the settings. Uh, so let's do that quick. Let's jump into parameters. Let's have a look at tool axis control. The first thing on our list. Let's focus on a fixed angle to axis. So we keep it within line of our axes. Uh, let's give us some collision control. So Let's turn off the flute, focus on the shoulder shank and holder, and give it a tilt tool automatic based on the avoidance that I'm about to select. So if I shift select, I can quickly, easily select the inside of that body and end selection there. You might want to go into your linking and tidy it up a bit. So based on the, the reference that I've got here, I'm probably going to set that to zero. And you can give a more direct method. Retractor clearance is good for this example. The only thing I want to change is giving it a bottom approach. Now, based on my planes that I have selected here, I'm coming from the bottom of the part as I flipped it around. And if I say OK, 2022 recalculates the tool path automatically. And very quickly, I get a tool path that I'm looking for. Now, I can back plot that just to get a verification. Now I can see very closely that it's doing a zigzag for one and a outside in approach. Now, for us to change that wasn't that simple back in the day. <clears throat> With Mastercam's unified toolpath, very easily we can jump into the parameters, go to our cut pattern, and we'll notice we have options available. We can change from strategy, whether it's a parallel or a morph, surface parallel boundaries etc 
I'm looking for more a uh, center out approach. I click on the center out approach. Let me just change my machine by regions and zigzags good and say okay. Automatically calculate that and I get a center out approach as we see in our back plot. And if I go and say I want to clean up, we can easily jump in, say containment. I want to do a cleanup on the edge, say OK, which will take the surfaces that are selected, create a boundary on that, and give us a cleanup. So if I have a look at the back plot now, you can see it does the cleanup and then the inside outside. We can change the order of that. It's not exactly a new, new feature, but we can jump into roughing and say, I want to reverse the order of that strategy. So all that does will basically take that, sorry, it's not completed, I'm a bit hasty. Um, all that will do is give my center out approach, and then at the very end, it will focus on the cleanup, just like that. And then very easily, with the pick of a few buttons, using Mastercam's Unify toolpath, we get a very nice toolpath based on automatic. Now we will go into more depth into different scenarios and how Unified will play a role in the, the multi-axis um, module. So let's just open another part, jumping into this Unified and getting into more depth. <clears throat> so we've got a very similar part and you can see right in the same corner that we started in the beginning, I actually have a morph strategy. Now that morph strategy is the classic one and by no means is it a bad toolpath, works very well here, but the purpose of this demonstration is to show you what does the unified have play a role in. You know, what, what, what are we using unified for? So if I click on unified, uh, you'll see I'm going to select the same cutter that I've got for the morph. But if I jump into my cut patterns, we've got different strategies that we can pick through. So if I focus on the curve selection, what I'm actually doing is I'm giving it anything that's curve related, I can do it. But I actually want to do something morph related. So let's just focus on the curve. Let's go and select the curve. So jumping straight into that, I can shift select and select my first curve, which is this curve here. And I need another curve. So I simply just click on the curve again. It gives us another option for a curve. And I'm going to use this back curve as my to and from. So traditionally with Morph, we can say to and from curve and select our drive surface. We can do the same thing here. Instead of using guide, we can simply jump into a Morph strategy and select our drive surface and go through our parameter settings as normal. So what I'm going to do is just say OK to show you how quickly you can generate a toolpath based on our morph strategy. <clears throat> so we can easily go and alter all our parameters to suit how we want our tool access control to happen and what tools to be using. So let's touch on that a little bit. Let's uh, jump into that and quickly focus on our strategy that we have in place. So the very first thing I'm going to focus on is my tool axis control. And this I'm going to use a surface with a tilt. So I'm basically trying to get my cutter, my taper form cutter to give it a bit more contact using a, you know, a more of an angled cut. So I'm going to give it an angle of 47 and a half and jump straight into my collision control. Uh, Whereas the previous example, I was focusing on shoulder, shank, and holder. I'm going to keep it on my flute contact and tell it that if my flute comes into contact with a particular surface that I'm going to select, I want it to stop my toolpath calculation. I don't want you to carry on. And based on that, I'm going to say, well, based on the machining, oh, sorry, on the geometry that I'm going to select, which is this back uh, surface this year, and select that. And then the next thing in line, we can look at linking. So we can give it a plain sort of layout. 
<clears throat> I want to lift this up slightly. Let's give it about a 7.25. Plane's good. We can use a lead in, lead out approach. <clears throat> and give that a lead in, lead out. And we can leave it as blend spine, wrap it to uh, retract to rapid. And this looks good. The only thing I'd probably do differently is give it an arc tangent uh, approach. Maybe reduce this uh, percentage of the tool and then just copy it along for my lead out. And if I say OK, we should very easily, OK, I can see this is a zigzag method. So let's jump into parameters real quick. Jump into cut patterns, change that from zigzag to one way and say OK. So very quickly, we've almost got the identical toolpath to a traditional morph thing. Now I left this particular issue here um, for a reason. So we can explain this in a little bit more detail as to what's going on here. So if we look at our morph uh, opposed to our unified, we've got exactly the same toolpath, except for this little issue here. Now, the reason being is this first curve that I selected as my prom curve is not exactly a true arc and there's probably some interference along that curve so we can resolve this by jumping into our parameters and going into what we call margins and on the start margin i'm going to give it an exaggerated value to sort of offset it slightly and once i do that and recalculate all it's doing is it's taking that value offsetting it slightly and giving us a nice clean identical um, strategy from the morph to the unified. If I regenerate that, you can see between the two, identical. So this is just a brief uh, introduction into what MOS, uh, MOSCAM's unified toolpath is doing for the multi-axis uh, module. Now we'll go into slightly more uh, in-depth examples as to how we can utilize this on everyday parts. Um, and we will do this in a second video um, so we can tune into the next video that I'm about to post uh, for part two of Mastercam's 2022 Unified Multi-Access Toolpath. So thanks for joining us and uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thanks.